BD's ATV channel and YouTube channel. VK1 WIA National News, wireless weather and radio sport is next. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. WIA National News, I'm Graham VK4BB. We do begin this week, however, with the tragic conclusion to a missing person story reported here on WIA News several years ago. The bodies of an amateur radio operator and his companion have been positively identified. Russell Hill, Victor Kilo 3, Victor Zulu Popper and Carol Clay disappeared two years ago in the Victorian bushland where the two had gone camping. The last message heard from Russell was on March 20th of 2020 when he made a QSO on one of the HF bands reporting his location as in the Victorian Alps. No one heard from him again. One day later, campers discovered the radio operator's vehicle and the couple's campsite destroyed by fire. Forensic testing has now confirmed the identity of remains found last November as those of the radio ham and his friend. 
A man who had been camping nearby was arrested last November and charged with two counts of murder. The man, in his mid-50s, is due in court in May. Victorian police had described the couple's disappearance of one of their most baffling high-profile cases. The television show 60 Minutes approached the Hornsby and District Amateur Radio Club to enlist their help to showcase amateur radio and the disappearance of aircraft MH370. It had been reported an amateur had used the whisper technique to suggest the location of the missing aircraft. Matt VK2BAI, Colin VK2JCC and Rod VK2DAY assisted with this task and video will be on screen tonight, Sunday 20th of Feb 2022. But is it credible? A website newscast on Tuesday this week has discounted the latest aid in the search. Eight years after Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 disappeared, authorities have come to no firm conclusions about why and exactly where the airplane went down. Theories abound on both counts. The search for the Boeing 777's probable last resting place at the bottom of the southern Indian Ocean has proved long, complicated and expensive. So when a British engineer claimed recently to have devised a new method of locating the last airborne moments of MH370 more precisely, and hence the location of the wreckage, new headlines about the extraordinary disappearance have re-emerged. The trouble is, other investigators who have devoted much time and expertise to the matter do not find his method credible. Richard Godfrey claims that a little-known database created by amateur radio enthusiasts can track flight paths. The Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, or Whisper Network, contains messages transmitted on the HF radio bands to evaluate propagation conditions. Receivers log the message content, the transmitter call sign and location, along with the signal-to-noise ratio, frequency and frequency drift of the messages as received. Now Peter, VK4EA, reports on behalf of the WIA Board of Directors. The WIA constitution requires a certain degree of directors each year to stand down and potentially for new directors to join the board via a nomination process. Also, subject to the number of nominations received, an election may take place for membership to decide on the successful directors. This year, three directors will step down at this coming annual general meeting to be held on the 7th of May. Before the end of 2021, a returning officer called for nominations to fill these vacancies. All retiring directors, Lee, VK3 GK, Oscar, VK3 TX, and Phil, VK2 CPR, were also eligible for renomination. John Marshall, a returning officer, has advised the board that three nominations are received for the soon to be vacated positions. Hence, according to the Constitution, an election is not required. The board wishes to advise and congratulate Lee Moore, VK3 GK, who will be reappointed to the board, and we welcome two new directors. Chris Dimitri, uh, VK3FY, and Stephen Green, a VK2TSG. I look forward to working with you when you take up office following this year's AGM. Please join me in thanking the retiring directors, Oscar and Phil. It's a huge effort and commitment. Thanks, guys. And a quick plug, Oscar is now a director of the International Amateur Radio Union, Region 3, so he's not completely lost to us. We look forward to Oscar representing our interests in this important international forum. With the AGM coming up in May, the board would like to remind members that nominations for the WI Awards are now open. I've placed the nomination form link in the text edition, or just Google WI Awards or WIA Merit Nomination. If there's anybody that's inspired you recently, please consider nominating them for recognition. There's so much good stuff happens around us, it's time to celebrate their achievements. A special shout out to Kevin, VK4UH, who is the media scatter guru. Kevin has been diligently provided copy for AI Magazine for about 10 years on this fascinating mode of operation and we wish to thank him for his contribution. And that means we're looking for a willing volunteer to take over. Please get in touch if you, if you can. And finally, the Publications Committee, PubCom, are seeking exp expressions of interest for a number of volunteers to assist with advertising, ham ads and some other magazine, other magazine roles. And that's it from me for now. This has been Peter at VK4EA on behalf of the WIA Board of Directors. This is Editor-in-Chief of Amateur Radio Magazine, Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH. We're recruiting. The Publications Committee agreed this week that we should recruit a new correspondent to write about DX in the ham radio world on the bands up to 30 megs. However, we believe our readers would like our contributors to focus more on what's coming up than who worked what, with which and with whom in the recent past, as DX columns did in years now long gone. Blogs and social media on the internet now do that to satisfy DX's needs for pretty much immediate news. Indeed, 
Spotting sites enable you to see what's happening on the bands more or less in real time. Our readers survey last year, remember last year? Yielded clues on readers' interests. You remember last year, in lockdown, surfing the net for hours to work out what band you might be able to pick up that country station or day expedition you were after. Readers interested in the bands up to 10 metres are keenly interested in what's going to be happening so that they can prepare to pounce when the time comes. Naturally, as the solar cycle has a major influence on propagation, readers would expect our columnists to provide regular information and commentary on the subject in plain English. Being a volunteer position, I have to say that the pain conditions are out of this world, definitely not within this earthly realm. If you're an active DXer, yet have time every couple of months to write about 1,000 to 2,000 words, that would interest the critical audience of AR Magazine's readers, let's hear from you. My email address can be found on the contents page of the latest issue. Put DX Contributor in the subject line. While I have your attention, don't forget that the focus of the next issue is test and measurement. No matter whether you're a homebrew constructor or a plug-and-play rig operator, every amateur will need to measure something at one time or another, from VSWR to battery volts, from RF microvolts to DC current draw. This is one not to be missed. Issue 2, out in mid-March. Amateur Radio Magazine, the trusted source for Australian radio amateurs since 1933. This has been AR Magazine Editor-in-Chief Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH for VK1WIA News. This is VK1WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions www.wia.org.au This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1 WIA. Now, international news with Jason, VK2 LAW. Hello. Leading this week's international news, the ISS to be disposed of in waters of Point Nemo. The deep waters of the South Pacific have been chosen as the final resting place for the International Space Station in the years ahead. As we hear from Jim Meachin, Zulu Lima 2 Bravo Hotel Foxtrot reporting on Amateur Radio Newsline. The region is known as Point Nemo, the South Pacific Oceanic Uninhabited Area, and it's been selected by NASA as the final resting place of the International Space Station. The United States Space Agency intends to retire the Space Laboratory by 2031 by having it crash into this remote section of the ocean. While it is no surprise that plans were in the works for its retirement, NASA had been quiet until recently about its specific plans. The ISS was launched in 2000, and NASA has said in announcing its plans that it intends to keep the space station operational until the very end. Its experiments and its many contacts through the amateur radio on the International Space Station program have kept it and its more than 200 astronauts and cosmonauts in the spotlight over the years. NASA plans to yield the space station's position among the stars to commercial ventures. The final destination for the ISS is about 2,000 miles north of Antarctica and 3,000 miles off the eastern coast of New Zealand. I'm Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF. Since 1971, it's been a place that has become home to space debris from other nations, including Russia and Japan. On the 14th of February 1922, the Marconi Company began to broadcast a five-minute program of speech and music within the weekly half-hour calibration transmission. The broadcasts were made weekly on Tuesday using the call sign to Mike Tango from an ex-army hut in the village of Rittle near Chelmsford. Initially, the station had only 200 watts and transmitted on 4 to 8 kilohertz using an inverted L antenna. The enthusiastic team, led by Captain Peter Eckersley, assembled their transmitter together with a gramophone player, microphone and on occasions a piano from the local public house to entertain listeners. The regular announcement, this is to Emma Tock, Rittle Testing, Rittle Testing, became quite well known. 
This was the first regular wireless broadcast for entertainment in the UK and its success provided the foundation for the formation of the BBC later in 1922. Members of Chelmsford Amateur Radio Society are operating a special event station to commemorate this historic event. GB100 to Mike Tango is active during February. The Ham Radio Science Citizen Investigation Group, or HAMSI, has received a $50,000 US dollar grant from the National Science Foundation to support its 2022 in-person and virtual workshop. The workshop to be held at the US Space and Rocket Centre in Huntsville, Alabama on March 18 and 19 will focus on connections between space weather and terrestrial weather according to the ARRL letter. It will also host a team meeting of HamSci's personal space weather station project which is being funded by a much larger NSF grant. The ARRL has refined what constitutes low power in its contests, reducing the maximum power level for the category from its long-standing 150 watts to the 100 watt level used by most other major contest sponsors. CQ Newsroom reports the league made the change both to standardise its categories with other contests and in recognition of the fact that 100 watts is now the most common barefoot output power of current HF transceivers. QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo coming March 12 and 13, 2022. Courtney Duncan, November 5 Bravo Foxtrot will be delivering an incredible thought-provoking keynote presentation at the upcoming March 12 and 13 QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo. N5BF will speak about the importance of amateur radio and other technical hobbies in advancing mankind's biggest projects. As an example, missions to deep space, the Moon and Mars, are supported by JPL and NASA engineers, many of whom are amateur radio operators. Courtney recently retired from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory after 35 years of working on radios for spacecraft, including the Mars rover and helicopter. He is currently president of the San Bernardino Microwave Association and active in EME moon bounce and 10 GHz contesting. And to IARU Region 3, the Winter Olympics. The Chinese Radio Amateurs Club has been operating Beijing 2022's Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games special event station, Bravo Yankee 1 Charlie Romeo Alpha slash WO22, which has been active on FT8, SSB and CW on 160 through to 10 metres and will go QRT when the Games close today on the 20th of February. Contact awards are available if a log is posted to Club Log. Region 3 News Editor for the IARU, Oscar Rees, VK3 Tango X-Ray, a director of IARU Region 3, has said that they would like to receive digital photos of amateur-related activities to be used in its media-related publications. Please contact the editor if you can assist. The deadline for the next edition is the 31st of March. For VK1WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello all and a free event not to forget is on air now. A free DV activity period is taking part on the 19th and 20th of February and is designed to bring people together interested in HF Digital Voice on the air for conversation and fun. It starts at 1600 hours UTC on the 19th and then 24 hours later at 1559 hours UTC on the 20th. Although we have brought you many details, more I suggest that you go to freedv.org. Note that LSB stroke DIGL is used below 10 MHz as per current convention for voice modes, USB DIGU otherwise. Now contest wise 2022. March, it's the John Moore Memorial Field Day, 19th of March and 20th of March. Harry Angel Memorial 80 Minute Sprint, Saturday 7th of May 2022. 10 hours UTC to 11.46 UTC. The Don Edwards Memorial Slow Moors Contest, two days, starting May 14, 1900 hours, concluding 15 May, 1600 hours. A Slow Moors Contest to encourage amateurs to give it a go. 
Saturday evening, 14 May, between 6 pm and 9 pm Eastern Standard Time, on 80 metres. Sunday afternoon, 15 May, between 1 pm and 4 pm Eastern Standard Time, on 40 metres. International CQ Pride Contest, June 4 to 6. New Worldwide Digital Contest, also June 4 to 6. The AWRL Worldwide Digital Contest will debut at 1800 hours UTC on June 4. Ending 23.59 on June 6, 2022. All non-ready modes are permitted. Permitted bands are 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, 10 and 6 metres. And there will be two power categories. Up to 5 watts PEP output. Up to 100 watts PEP output. VK Shires Contest 11 June 2022. WIA VHF UHF Field Days, Winter 2022. 0200 hours UTC, Saturday 25 June, through 0159 hours UTC, Sunday 26 June. DX Window On the 19th of February 2022, that is yesterday, Saturday, it was 80 years since the bombing of Darwin, and to commemorate this event, DIRC will be holding a DX Marathon on the Saturday using call sign VIADBOD from the old Qantas hangar in Parap. This hangar was standing in 1942 and did sustain some damage in the raids. Special event marks 80 years since Fairways first broadcast. The original 75 kilowatt transmitter that went on the air for the first Voice of America broadcast 80 years ago this month, is the centerpiece of a special event station, celebrating that historic anniversary. The transmitter no longer works, and is part of an exhibit at the VOA Museum in Westchester, Ohio. But there are plenty of working transmitters and transceivers to celebrate the day it went live on February 1, 1942. Hams will be calling QRZ as W3V, W80 and W4A this weekend, February 19 and 20, from VOA sites in Washington, D.C., Westchester, Ohio and Greenville, North Carolina. Jocelyn Braunt, KD8 VRX of the Westchester Amateur Radio Association, WC8 VOA, Said certificates will be available for anyone who works any or all of the three stations. Listen and work FW1JG from Wallace Island for the next two or so years on 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres using SSB and FT8. Danish DX Group celebrates 50 years. The Danish DX Group, DDXG, was founded on May 27, 1972. To celebrate the 50th anniversary, Special Event Station OZ50DDXG is on the air until December 31, 2022. Radio amateurs around the world can obtain the anniversary award by having contacts using CW phone or digital modes with the anniversary station OZ50DDXG during 2022. The anniversary station may be contacted once on each band and with each modulation type in every month. Each approved contact counts one point. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FUQ Inningham. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. Hello, and as we do get into special interest groups, let's take a quick look at the educational scene. The Orlando Hamcation has selected Dutch amateur Dick Vilstra, PA0DFN, as the 2022 Carol Perry Educator of the Year. A retired public school principal, Dick continues working with young people by organising exhibitions at different schools to make students aware of the radio hobby and inspire them to pursue careers in science and technology. 
Dick is also heavily involved in amateur radio direction finding and uses hidden transmitter hunts as one method of introducing young people to amateur radio. He's the representative of Veron, the Dutch National Ham Radio Association, to the International Amateur Radio Union's Region 1, Europe, Africa and Middle East, ARDF Committee. The Carol Perry Educator of the Year Award is named in honour of its first recipient, noted ham educator Carol Perry, WB2MGP. The award was presented at this month's Orlando Hamcation Hamfest in Florida, along with the 2021 award presented to Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, another of the Amateur Radio Newsline presenters. An educational professional for more than 28 years, Neil currently teaches chemistry at Bloomington High School South. He's also the school's amateur radio club sponsor and has introduced 3,600 students and parents to amateur radio through his involvement in the organisation. Neil is also an ARRL life member. Worldwide Special Interest Group's ATV. Every pixel tells a story. Amateur radio in 60 seconds. Richard. G3CWI has been making a series of short videos covering topics such as the characteristics of each HF band and questions raised by newer radio hams as well as tips for the more experienced. He aims to produce one video each day. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. Joining us now is Marty, VK4KC, Parks on the Air Administrator for Australia, to inform us of a new software utility for Windows that Alan MacDonald, VK2MET, has written, called MParks Converter. The WWFF and POTA programs share the same parks in Australia, but they do have their own unique park numbering systems. So MParks Converter will analyse your log file from a park activation, whether it be in the WWFF or POTA format, and quickly convert it to the other format, that being POTA to WWFF or WWFF to POTA. For those using this utility, it has saved so much time and effort over manually editing logs. The utility also features a spot builder for when you are out activating with no mobile phone coverage. It will create a message using the correct syntax that you can then copy and paste into JS8 Call to get that spot through to Parks and Peaks and POTA spotting pages. The WWFF and POTA programs were born from one origin but diverged some years ago. They share a lot in common but also offer differences which may have greater appeal to some operators. But to many, they are both attractive programs to be involved with, and I am seeing this as POTA expands internationally with the large increase in registered users with over 100 Australian amateurs signing up within the last 12 months. The MParks utility gives operators the ability to be both agnostic towards both programs, but more importantly, to enjoy involvement in an even bigger community of mobile operators. Alan has made this software available free of charge and can be downloaded at https colon forward slash forward slash www.meta.com.au That's www.meta.com.au Thanks Marty. On to Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. NASA raised concerns about SpaceX's new Starlink satellites including an increase of the risk of collision in orbit in a letter to the FCC. There is currently about 1,800 operational Starlink satellites in orbit, and there have already been several near misses in orbit, with one study suggesting Starlinks are responsible for half of all close encounters in low Earth orbit. NASA has concerns with the potential for a significant increase in the frequency of conjunction events and possible impacts to NASA's science and human spaceflight missions. Speaking of which, three of the four crew members in the SpaceX Crew-4 launch to the International Space Station are licensed amateurs. They are Robert Hines, KI-5RQT, Chell Lindgren, KO-5MOS, and Samantha Cristoforetti, IZ0UDF. Chell and Samantha have served previously on the ISS. Crew 4 is set to launch on April 15 for a six-month stay. Crew 4 will be the fourth crew rotation mission of SpaceX's human space transportation system and its fifth flight with astronauts. 
Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA, AN006. Sergei is active as EM1U from the Ukrainian Antarctic Station on Galinda's Island until sometime in April. Activity will be limited on various HF bands, but he was heard this past week on 20 metres, SSB, between 0600 and 0930, and after 1430 UTC. QSL via UT7UA. NA057. John. AD8J is active as HR9 slash AD8J from Guanaja Island, Honduras, until February 26th. Activity on 80 to 10 metres using CW, FT8, and limited SSB with 100 watts into wire antennas. John plans on a big all-band effort for this weekend's ARRL International DXCW contest. Closer to home, OC150. Listen for special event station. 8C9 MGP, active from Lombok Island, Indonesia, this weekend between February 19th and 21st, which is during their Bao Nayal Lombok Traditional Festival, and March 11th to 13th, which is during the Mandalika Grand Prix. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Stamp Collecting Amateurs. The Radio Amateur Association of Greece informs us that the Greek Post Office will issue four postal stamps with ham radio motifs, titled radio technology in Greece. Interested collectors are advised that only 5,000 stamp booklets are on offer, so if you get one, lucky you. More information can be found on the website www.raag.org. And that's it for me for this week. Take care. I'm Cole, VK3GTV. Across Australia from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service which can be heard in the ACT and Canberra region through our Mount Janini repeaters on 146.950 and 438.050 every Sunday at 0900 local. On behalf of the Canberra Region Amateur Radio Club broadcast team, this is Amanda, VK1WX. 2022 Social Scene VK6 Peel Amateur Radio Group's Swap Meet next weekend, the 26th of February, Mandurah Bowling Club. VK4, it's Redfest Saturday, April 9, St. Michael's College, Caboolture. VK5, the South Coast Amateur Radio Club's Buy and Sell, Sunday, April 24. And in VK5, also the Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the Serg Convention, Mount Gambier, on the Queen's Birthday Weekend in June in VK5. Now the final, final digital SSTV transmissions from the International Space Station. RS Europe and RS USA teams plan to perform special SSTV experiments on February 20, that's today, using a new SSTV digital coding scheme. The downlink from the International Space Station will be 437.8 FM. AMSAT ON report... The first experiment in the series will utilise RS-approved ground stations in Europe that will transmit these digital SSTV signals. They'll be available for all in the ISS footprint when SSTV transmissions occur. We kindly request the amateur radio community refrain from the use of the voice repeater during this RS-SSTV experiment on February 20. The first SSTV experiment is planned for today between 0512 UTC and 1151 UTC for five ISS passes over Europe. Please be aware the event does depend on RS radio availabilities and ISS crew support, so last-minute changes may occur. Now, until next we meet, I'm Graham VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5 BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.
Solar Cycle 25 is ramping up and that means the space weather is getting busy. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we've got a couple eruptions on the Sun's west limb. Don't worry, those solar storm eruptions are not Earth-directed, so we don't have to worry about that. We've also had a couple mini solar storm launches in around so center disk. Those are probably too small to affect Earth all that much or give us any big solar storming, so we don't have to worry about any big solar storms this week, likely. And we do have a couple finger-like coronal holes. One of them has been sending us some fast solar wind, but that solar wind is waning right now. The next one won't send us some fast solar wind for probably another six or seven days. Yeah, about six days. And that one might give us a little bit of solar storming, but not too much. We can kind of put down our cameras for a little while and Starlink can kind of just go, oh my goodness, thanks for the breather, right? But meanwhile, as we take a look at the east limb of the sun we do have more active regions that are going to be rotating into earth view in fact as we take a look at the sun from our far-sighted monitor this is stereo a and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side you can see a couple of those active regions on the east limb and stereo's view those are going to be uh, rotating into earth view over the next couple days so we are going to continue to have the risk for big uh, solar flares and for solar storms that will be launched and that means it could be issues for more space traffic so why did a minor space weather event pose such a major problem for the Starlink satellites? Well, space weather is still very much the wild, wild west of weather, and predictions aren't always what they seem. In fact, sometimes a prediction of a single solar storm ends up being a series of solar storms, and that's exactly what happened with this particular event. In fact, we had multiple solar storms in rapid succession, and when we have these solar storms, some of them are aligned exactly the opposite of one another. And when that happens, if you think of the Earth's atmosphere as like a flywheel, one of the solar storms, the first one, spun the atmosphere up just like this. But then the other one wanted to turn around and reverse that motion. So what happens, the second solar storm had to slow down that atmosphere, stop it, and reverse it. And when you do that, you cause a lot of friction, and a lot of heating. And that seemed to be one of the magic ingredients that may have caused this minor series of events to become a major problem. For more details on this week's space weather, including how those series of solar storms this past week caused issues for Starlink using the flywheel effect, come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.